I believe that I briefly mentioned when we began this topic that there was actually one more characteristic that makes you a candidate for resonance that I, did, I wanted to put off for a bit. So there's actually a fourth characteristic that makes you a candidate for resonance. Now would be a good time to mention that. Um, if you're a third, fourth, or fifth period non-metal, you can also be a candidate for uh, resonance, even if you don't fall into any of these other categories. So basically these are um, non-metals from the third period and beyond non-metals from the third period and beyond. Even if they don't have any of the, uh, the first three characteristics, they can still be candidates for resonance. I, I probably shouldn't even have to say non-metals here, because basically metals don't really participate in resonance. Metals don't participate in resonance, because after all, resonance involves covalent bonding. We haven't really talked about this much, but resonance is a feature of covalent bonding. Resonance doesn't have anything to do with ionic bonding. Resonance is a feature of covalent bonding. Um, but if you had a metal and a non-metal, they wouldn't have covalent bonding. They would generally have highly ionic bonding. Um, so maybe I, it goes without saying that we're talking about non-metals here. Uh, pretty much all resonance involves non-metals um, because it's non-metals bonding with other non-metals that have covalent bonds, and that's the type of bonds that resonance is relevant for. So really we can just say um, basically atoms in the third period and beyond. The, the other candidate for resonance is atoms in the third period and beyond. Let's put dots in for all the atoms that can participate in resonance here. Well, this oxygen has lone pairs, this oxygen has lone pairs, and I hope you're familiar with the idea that these sulfurs have plenty of lone pairs. Even without a formal charge, the sulfur would have two lone pairs, and with the formal charge, it has a third lone pair. Now, what about this chlorine? I hope you can read that this is a Cl for chlorine. Well, the chlorine doesn't have any lone pairs, it doesn't have any pi bonds, and it's not a carbocation or anything else with less than an octet, but it is a third period non-metal. Uh, any non-metal from the third period or beyond can be a candidate uh, for resonance, even if it doesn't satisfy the other three characteristics. So I can put a dot in there for that chlorine. So that is another characteristic for resonance. Um, now, keep in mind, if you're a third period non-metal and you have these other characteristics too, then you can still have resonance. Remember, it's perfectly okay to have more than one of these characteristics. You only need one of these characteristics to be a candidate for resonance. So is this a legal electron pushing arrow? Yeah, uh, because it involves the oxygen that has a dot and this chlorine that has a dot. They're both good candidates for resonance. Um, now, it's true that if we form a pi bond here, the chlorine will have more than an octet. That's okay for atoms that are in the third period and beyond. Um, again, that's the reason why these are candidates for resonance, even if they don't have the other characteristics. So this is totally legal. All right, for completeness, I wanted to bring this up. Um, and I should emphasize that um, th this doesn't come up too much in organic chemistry. This is not the type of resonance that we usually care about the most in organic chemistry. However, it does have some OCHEM applications. It, it, in an OCHEM class, it's worth knowing about this. It's worth knowing um, that third period nonmetals um, can be involved in resonance, even if they don't have these characteristics. So it's worth having this in your notes. But again, in, in the vast majority of the examples we're going to do, we're going to focus on these first three characteristics. Lone pair, pi bond, or carbocation. Remember that technically, any atom with less than an octet could participate in resonance, but that hardly ever comes up except for carbocations. So that's what we'll focus on.